When you think of cancer research, there is one name that stands above all others, and that is Patrick Johnson. It is an absolute honour to have our building, our cancer research building, named in his memory. To have his portrait in the foyer of the building where we come in and we think of the work, of the legacy and of the vision that Paddy has had in driving cancer research agenda here in Northern Ireland. The first time I met Paddy was probably in 1995 when he was doing visits back and forward before he actually formally took up the post uh, of Professor of Oncology in 1996. He came into my office, uh, this whirlwind of energy. He wanted to make things better for patients and for the doctors and for scientists and doctors to work together. There was a report called the Campbell Report came out just in 1996. It was in and around the same time as Paddy arrived. And that report was from the Chief Medical Officer who advised there should be more centralisation of complex cancer services, there should be a cancer centre built, and furthermore, we managed to get access to the politicians, both on the unionist side and the national side. I maybe opened the door a little bit. Paddy then charged through, presented his vision, and won them over almost within minutes that this was the right thing to do. It has been quite uh, important for me to work with Paddy in the sense that we had similar sort of experience and similar sort of vision of how research should be reorganized within the university. And we ended up working together at that time, uh, not only dealing with the problems in the School of Biomedical Science, but also uh, with the opportunity to build new buildings and expand the place, which was, which was great fun. And I think he was a tremendous sort of worker. In the sense, like Paddy, it was always, when I came in at eight o'clock, he had already been working for two or three hours. Hours, which, which, was the, which was the sort of style that he had. When I saw the opportunity to come work in the Department of Oncology as a research technician, it was something I jumped at. Working with Patty was also very inspiring. Um, we would have eight o'clock lab meetings once a week, which were quite tough. Um, he pushed everybody really hard. Um, Quite often somebody would be presenting their work and they may have worked very hard on a presentation and it might have been six months work and at the end he would simply say, so what? How is this going to help patients? So he was very driven um, and very focused and made us be the same. So many of our research teams are involved in clinical trials, both European and UK and these trials are directly impacting patients. And that was always Paddy's plan. That was why he wanted this research centre to be here in this NBC campus, so close to the cancer centre. I must say, when I met Paddy first, I had no intention of coming to Belfast. He was so positive and so clear on what he wanted to achieve, had done his research on me, and that also was very impressive. I was very much an unproven young book at the time and he really believed in me and I knew within five minutes of meeting him that I wanted to be in Belfast. The research program has made a massive difference to patients here in Belfast. It really has created a culture of excellence within the health service where we deliver care to the patients. Not just patients taking part in clinical trials, but the wider patient population have benefited from this pursuit of excellence through research. I've, I've no doubt whatsoever that it has also attracted some very high quality individuals to work in Belfast and deliver care to our patient population. I got a phone call one afternoon from his secretary, Mary Carmichael, and she said, Paddy would like to meet you. And I said, well, that's fine. If you give me a date and time, I'll arrange, uh, arrange to come over. No, he wants to see you now. <laughs> and that was probably the tenor of my relationship with Paddy from then on in. I think probably the main challenge was that Paddy's vision was for a multidisciplinary centre um, that also had connections with the clinical side. And a key aspect of that was being co-located with a new clinical cancer centre as well because he had a vision for comprehensive cancer services. Within the university, the university was structured in disciplines um, by school and certainly in medicine by department. 
But Paddy's view was to bring the best researchers together from many of those disciplines and many of those departments to deliver the vision of what he wanted in cancer research. So we had immunologists, um, geneticists from the school, chemists from the School of Chemistry, staff from the School of Pharmacy, biology and biochemistry involved. So that in itself was probably a very new concept at the time and how you then would resource that and put the focus on that resource in terms of infrastructure, staff, how we work together um, was probably, probably the biggest challenge at the time. But it was a concept of a multidisciplinary centre that has now been developed right across the university. Paddy was a born entrepreneur. Uh, anybody who ever met him would have known that. And I think Paddy also recognised that what he was trying to achieve could never be fully realised within academia only. He always realised that it required a partnership with industry. Um, with that in mind, Paddy was always very supportive of the concept of spin-outs, that is taking your basic um, ideas or your basic research, getting startup or seed funding and trying to commercialise your ideas. And with that in mind, Paddy was involved in three very successful startup companies, Almac Diagnostic Services, um, which now employs almost 200 people locally. He was also involved in finding of fusion antibodies, uh, which is now listed on the alternative investment market in the London Stock Exchange. And finally and more recently, he was involved in um, the startup of CB6, uh, a drug development company. And so uh, when you look at all those three companies, I'm, I'm guessing combined, um, maybe employ somewhere between three to 400 um, people locally. It's now 13 years since the centre first opened. And whilst we have made great inroads in scientific discoveries and improved outcomes for patients, we now need to look to the future. And how we conduct cancer research is changing. How we look at the disease, how we think about it, how we try and treat it, and actually how we look for new drug targets is rapidly evolving. We need to develop better collaborations across the world we need to develop new collaborations as well, bringing in new science, new approaches to make the difference to these difficult cancers. The renaming of our building gives us that international presence to stand up and to be counted as one of the leading cancer research centres across the world.